Hi, let's take on some uh, gate previous year problems from uh, the chapter bearings. Okay, so the first problem is in a simple concentric shaft bearing arrangement, the lubricant flows in the 2 mm gap between the shaft and the bearing. Okay, so a rough uh, schematic, uh, I mean rough diagram will be this. This is our shaft and uh, enclosed by bearing and they are concentric okay it is a bit difficult to draw here but uh, I'm trying my best so yeah so this this gap is 2 mm okay. so this is uh, 2 mm that is 0 0.002 meters and uh, this diameter is the flow diameter of the shaft is 100 mm that is 0 0.1 meters and uh, the flow may be assumed to be a plain qu quit flow with zero pressure gradient okay uh, the diameter of the shaft is given and its tangential speed is 10 meter per second okay so the tangential speed is 10 meter per second this is also given the dynamic viscosity of the lubricant is 0 0.1 kilogram per meter second that is uh, this is mu 0 0.1 pascal second uh, the frictional resisting force per 100 mm length of the bearing is and uh, you have to find the answer in Newton okay so uh, this shaft is rotating in this uh, bearing and uh, this distance this gap is actually very small uh, as compared to the diameter of the shaft so we can assume a linear profile a linear velocity profile between this gap okay where at this point at this point the velocity is zero and at this point let it be B let it be A at this point at this point uh, the velocity will be equal to the tangential speed that is 10 meter per second okay so by Newton's law of viscosity tau is equal to mu du by dy what is tau? tau is shear stress this is viscosity dynamic viscosity this is du is change in velocity and dy it is the gap distance okay so here the velocity is zero and at this point it goes on to have a value of 10 meters per second so du is actually equal to 10 minus 0 that is 10 meter per second okay and the gap is 2 mm that is 0 0.002 meter because we are taking the velocity in meter per second so this is 0 0.002 meter and uh, mu is 0 0.1 pascal second this is in SI units again so you can find out the shear stress okay which will be equal to 0 0.1 into 10 upon 0 0.002 the value is 500 Newton meter square Newton per meter square okay now they have asked us to find the frictional resisting force the frictional resisting force which I can say will be equal to shear stress into area what will be the area the liquid is filled in this portion so the liquid will be offering a frictional resistance on the surface area of the cylinder of the shaft that is rota rotating and the surface area of the cylindrical shaft is pi dl okay and uh, shear stress is 500 newton per meter square into pi into d what is d d is 0 0.1 meter l is 0 0.1 meter again because uh, you have to find the frictional resisting force per 100 meter length okay so solve this uh, f will be equal to 15.7 newton okay so this is our answer next question
the next question is a hydrodynamic journal bearing is uh, subjected to 2000 newton load load is 2000 newton at a rotational speed of 2000 rpm that is n is equal to 2000 rpm okay both uh, bearing diameter bore diameter and length are 40 mm that is uh, diameter is uh, 40 mm that is 0 0.04 meter and it is equal to length of the bearing also so if the radial clearance is 20 micrometer the radial clearance is given okay be careful that it is the radial clearance not the diametral clearance okay and uh, bearing is lubricated with an oil having viscosity of uh, 0 0.03 pascal second the Sommerfeld number of the bearing is okay so the question is directly uh, based on the formula of Sommerfeld number which is uh, Z n by P D by C whole square I'll tell you what the terms are Z is viscosity okay always try to solve this uh, I mean always try to find the Sommerfeld number by putting all these values in SI units okay so n here will be in RPS not m that is revolution per second okay p will be in newton per meter square viscosity is in pascal second and uh, this is diameter okay diameter of uh, the bearing and this c is diametral clearance okay diametral clearance we have been given the radial clearance in the question if you take here radius then in the denominator it will be radial clearance but because I have taken here diameter so in the denominator I will be taking the diametral clearance okay both are correct but uh, be careful whether you are uh, taking diameter or radius in this uh, formula okay uh, yeah so what is uh, Z that is viscosity viscosity is uh, 0 0.03 Pascal second uh, n is uh, 2000 rpm that is 2000 by 60 rps pressure is not given to us but the load is given and the diameter and length of the bearing are also given so pressure can be written as load upon projected area be careful that in uh, case of in the case of bearings we take the projected area so this is a cylindrical journal bearing if you project its area on this plane the area will be this will be length and this will be d so the area will be l into d the projected area of the bearing okay l into d this is d and uh, d d is a diameter which is 0 0.04 meter upon diametral clearance radial clearance is given so diametral clearance will be 40 micrometer that is 40 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter whole square okay and uh, put the value of uh, w and a also w that is load is 2000 newton and uh, projected area ap is l into d that is 0 0.04 into 0 0.04 that is 0 0.04 square okay so when you solve this uh, the Sommerfeld number will be equal to 0 0.8 okay so be careful uh, of the units that you, you will be putting in this formula in this Sommerfeld number okay next question ball bearings are rated by a manufacturer for a life of 10 raised to the power 6 revolutions okay so ball bearing is given the catalog rating of a particular bearing is 16 kilo newton and uh, the design load is 2 kilo newton the life of the bearing will be P into 10 to the power 6 revolutions where P is equal to okay so uh, we know the formula for uh, solving this question this is a pretty simple question so life of the bearing uh, is actually equal to C by W E raised to the power n million revolutions this formula we have studied while uh, we were while you were studying your theory portion where uh, C is C is the dynamic load rating dynamic load rating 
and uh, W E is the equivalent radial load okay acting on the bearing so everything is given to you and uh, this gives the answer in million revolutions so C is 16 kilonewton and uh, W E that is equivalent load is 2 kilonewton from the data given and N is 3 for ball bearings N is equal to 3 for ball bearings and uh, for uh, roller bearings for roller bearings N is what? N is 10 by 3 okay so ball bearings are given so 16 by 2 raised to the power 3 that is 8 cube and that will be 512 million revolutions okay and uh, the life the uh, the life of the bearing will be p into 10 raised to the power 6 revolutions that is p million revolutions so p is 512 512 million revolutions okay uh, next question for ball bearings ball bearings given the fatigue life l measured in a number of revolutions and the radial load f are related by this equation fl raised to the power 1 by 3 is equal to k okay so the equation is given and uh, where k is a constant it withstands a radial load of 2 kilo newton for a life of 540 million million revolutions and you have been asked that the load in kilo newton for a life of 1 million revolutions very basic question the equation has been given to you the data has been given to you you just have to find the load for uh, 1 million revolutions so use the equation that is given f l raised to the power 1 by 3 is equal to constant so f1 l1 raised to the power 1 by 3 is equal to f2 l2 raised to the power 1 by 3 1 stands for the first case 2 stands for the second case so f1 is uh, 2 kilo newton and 2 l1 is 540 million revolutions 540 into 10 to the power 6 revolutions raised to the power 1 by 3 is equal to f2 that we have to find out load and uh, for 1 million revolutions we have to find out load so 1 million revolutions 1 into 10 to the power 6 raised to the power 1 by 3 so that implies F2 will come out to be I guess it will be equal to 16.286 uh, kilonewton directly because we have uh, put the load here in kilonewton so the answer will be 16.286 uh, kilonewton okay pretty simple question okay so uh, which of the bearings given below should not be subjected to a thrust load okay so uh, let's take on the bearings one by one deep groove ball bearing okay deep groove ball bearing is actually designed for radial load it is uh, designed for radial load but it can also take very small uh, axial loads okay very small axial loads also and uh, these bearings are generally noiseless okay these are noiseless bearings uh, the second is angular contact bearing angular contact bearing uh, they can handle both uh, axial and radial load handle both axial and uh, radial load radial loads and uh, they are used in pairs always and uh, one more thing the relation between the radial load carrying capacity and the axial load carrying capacity is actually given by this relation that is fr by fa is less than 1 that means it can carry more axial load than the radial load because the ratio of both is less than 1 okay the cylindrical straight roller bearing uh, for cylindrical this is actually only designed for radial load so option C is our answer this is designed for radial load and uh, FA is equal to 0 in this case and uh, one more thing that uh, it has the maximum uh, maximum load carrying capacity load carrying capacity in a radial space okay maximum load carrying capacity in a radial space in a given radial space so if you have been given a radial space it will be having a maximum load carrying capacity okay and a given 
radial space okay uh, the next is single row tapered roller bearing so it can also take uh, both uh, axial and uh, radial loads okay but uh, in this case uh, fr by fa is greater than 1 that means it can take more of the radial loads as compared to axial load so fr by fa is greater than 1 in this case next question a motor driving a solid circular steel shaft transmits 40 kilowatt of power at 500 rpm so power is 40 kilowatt and uh, n is uh, 500 rpm if the diameter of the shaft is 40 mm that is 0 0.04 meter diameter is given the maximum shear stress in the shaft is okay this question is mainly from uh, the design of shafts and uh, by using the torsion equation we can find the maximum shear stress in the shaft so torsion equation is T by J is equals to tau by R T is the torque J is uh, polar moment of inertia tau is the shear stress in the shaft uh, take it maximum shear stress so this uh, will be equal to the radius of the shaft and uh, we have been given the diameter of the shaft power and n so torque can be found out by p0 t omega okay power is 40 kilo watt this is kilo watt okay so 40 into 10 raised to the power 3 kilo watt is equal to torque into omega is 2 pi n by 60 2 pi n by 60 uh, torque uh, you will get out as 763.9 943 Newton meter okay so put this uh, value in this torsion equation this will be 763.943 upon polar moment of inertia is for a shaft is uh, pi by 32 d raised to the power 4 and d is 0 0.04 meter so 0 0.04 raised to the power 4 is equal to tau max and uh, the radius of the shaft is d by 2 that is 0 0.04 by 2 okay so this gets cancelled out and uh, tau max when you solve it tau max will be equal to 60.792 mega pascal I'm directly writing the answer in mega pascal okay uh, you will get the answer in pascals and uh, then you have to convert it in mega pascal so this is 60.792 mega pascal okay next question Uh, the next question is uh, uh, the same question is that we have done like uh, I guess the third question or the fourth question was like this only uh, a self aligning ball bearing ball bearing is given to you has a basic dynamic load rating of uh, 35 kilo Newton if the equivalent radial load on the bearing is 45 kilo Newton the expected life uh, in a 10 raised to the power 6 revolution this okay so this is equal to C by uh, W E N so N is equal to 3 for uh, what ball bearings and uh, C is the dynamic load rating which is uh, 35 kilo Newton and the equivalent radial load on the bearing is 45 kilo Newton and N is 3 uh, this will give the answer in million revolutions okay so 35 upon 45 uh, raised to the power uh, 3 will give you uh, 0 0.47 million revolutions check the option where it lies and uh, A is the answer that is below 0 0.5 million revolutions okay so A is the answer pretty simple question it was okay fatigue life of a material for a fully reversed loading condition is estimated from this equation and uh, sigma a here in this equation is the stress amplitude in mega pascal and n is the fatigue life in cycles the maximum allowable stress amplitude in mega pascal for a life of 10 raised to the power 5 cycles under the same loading condition is so you have to find the maximum allowable stress amplitude for a life of 10 raised to the power 5 cycles the same loading condition okay so n is 10 raised to the power 5 cycles this is clear okay 
and uh, we know that the stress amplitude is equal to maximum stress minus minimum stress upon 2 but for a reversed loading condition uh, sigma minimum that is minimum stress is equal to minus of maximum stress that is their, um, their, their magnitude is same but they are opposite in direction so put this uh, here you will get sigma a is equal to sigma max and this is what I have to find so sigma max is equal to 1100 and uh, n is 10 raised to the power 5 cycles raised to the power minus 0 0.15 okay so solve it uh, value the maximum allowable uh, stress amplitude will be equal to 195.61 megapascal okay We'll get the answer in mega pascal directly because in this equation sigma a is the stress amplitude in mega pascals okay so 195.61 mega pascal will be the answer thank you